Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be looking at pillboxes. Now on the 1st of September 1939 Germany invaded Poland and on the 3rd of September France and Britain declared war on Germany and from a period of September through to May 1940 this was known as the phony war. No battles were fought, no bombs were dropped and the only decisive action taken was uh, economic embargo on Germany. But what this did do was allow Britain to strengthen its own defences. And so what I want to do is look at what those defences were. Scattered around the whole of the UK, coastal defences and pillboxes command posts, bunkers, they still exist to this day. So I think what I might do is just have a, a, a little look and see if I can see a few of them around around the Kent coast. The castle is built on, on I think this is Western, no this is Eastern Heights and on Western Heights at the other side is, is it Port Redoubt? It's an old Napoleonic fort, picture of it here but it was again used in World War II and they had gun batteries and things like that so all along. You can walk along the coast here and you see all these concrete posts with metal pieces jutting up where they would have had the gun emplacements. Wow. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be, said Churchill. So by 1940, Germany had um, invaded Denmark, Norway, Belgium, Holland, Luxembourg, and France, so Britain stood alone against the might of a now captured Europe. And so a directive was set up to build fortifications across the coastline of Britain, and these were designated as, they were called pillboxes, they were actually um, stout concrete structures which were just placed around the UK and they were built hastily by troops and locals using materials that they had at their disposal. Just behind me is the entrance to a tunnel. Now these tunnels work their way up through into the cliffs and this one here in particular was used as a lion's searchlight so they were scanning this coastal area for any any landings, the threat of invasion was taken very seriously. And so just up here, we see our first pillbox, which is designated as a Type 24, and it's uh, actually a brick construction as opposed to the concrete structures that we recognize as a pillbox. Now they designated pillboxes as types 20, 22 through 27 and they consisted of either a hexagonal or a square and they were primarily just had three or four soldiers in with guns and machine guns so basically a machine gun post. Let's go and have a look at that one. So it's quite a strategic point because it's overlooking the, the beach so in its um in its hastily built structure, you've got the concrete platform base. <laughs> can I pop the camera in? I don't think I can actually go inside this one. Can we see inside? So it's all brick inside as well. It's actually got a nice platform on the top. There's remnants here of infills. So they probably had a gun emplacement on top. And what it does, it gives a, a, a very clear aspect of the whole beach. So this single pillbox gave enough firepower to cover that whole beach. I'm not going up there. <laughs> However, just at the top of the hill, if we go down the steps here, um, by South Falland Lighthouse, there's a command post and also a, bun a bunker. So I've not been there in a while, let's go and have a look. This shows how 
they really took seriously the threat of invasion because the command posts, the pillboxes, they're dotted all around the UK. Certainly the southeast of England had, you know, the, the, the most likely threat of invasion. 20 miles across the sea there, you've got France, which we can actually see today. But just the other side of this fence on private land is a command post which you can just see the roof of. If you've watched any of Dad's army, now Captain Mannering is always telling his troops that Jerry could land at any moment and they took it seriously. So all the pillboxes, all the, the sort of inland defence was a serious threat but it never happened. You know Hitler with his Operation Sea Lion, the idea was that he would use the Luftwaffe to command the airspace, thus rendering no attack from his own fleet as they sailed across the channel. But of course, one decisive error where they bombed London and then had a reciprocal bombing of Berlin changed all of that. Operation Sea Lion was axed and he focused his intentions on Russia instead which means that our defence posts, all our inland defence, never actually saw any action. South Foreland at war, fortress plotting room. It says you can clearly see the entrance to the fortress plotting room which has been partly filled and grilled for safety. So there's your entrance. The gun batteries to the east of Dover, including the South Foreland battery, formed a fortress Gun batteries west of Dover formed the other fortress. The fortress plotting room was built deep underground for protection as it was the command centre for all the batteries in the fortress and also act as a reserve battery plotting room for the South Foreland battery. Look at that. So actually what we've got here is the entrance. <laughs> Bats are protected. Oh, it's slippery! <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Things we do for YouTube, right? <laughs> it's white chalk. I fell on my arsicles. And now I probably, I think what I'll do is take the safe route up here. <laughs> Action man. I slipped on that. Can you believe it? I'm going to walk around here because it's a little more solid. And we will have a look. I might even keep that footage in. So yeah, the, um, the entrance, now, now boarded up, we've got some kind of vast area and plotting rooms under here with only a, a, a concrete roof. So completely disguised, there's really nothing to see here. Move along. However, I want to get to the entrance without slipping this time so that I can poke my camera in. That was what it was, I couldn't get up here. I wanted to see if the camera can pick up anything inside. Can you see anything? I can't see anything, but maybe it'll be processed once I get home. Very interesting. Now, just along the main road at St. Margaret's Bay, there are three other pillboxes. I'm going to see if I can find them and we'll have a little investigation. I might wipe myself down. <laughs> this was supposed to be a serious video. Now I've got a wet arse. Anyway, let's go and have a look at these other ones. So I'm now walking up Otty Bottom Lane <laughs> and it's often the case you find pillboxes tucked away in farmer's fields. So I come across here. Lovely vista of the countryside as well as the sea so if there was going to be an invading force invading force they'd have come up through the land and there's pillbox number two in in St Margaret's Bay now this is private land and I'm not going to I suppose there's nobody around but I could probably but just from there on the other side of these woods 
is a second one so I'm going to head there and it may well be that that's just by the side of the road I think that next one and I might be able to cross over and, and get into there so let's head up here so the one which you saw in the field is that way and I can't get over there <laughs> it's totally out of bounds but look just here in someone's back garden is a pillbox let's go through here and just have a look now obviously we can't go into this one but we can go to the edge of their garden there's their house over there so another brick structure and this is a deep one so the windows for the machine gun posts are actually level with the ground or at least this ground has probably been lifted up um, and if you consider a, a man of five foot, six foot standing in there with his machine gun, then that's, that's quite deep in there. So clearly a Type 22, it's hexagonal. It's concrete on the edge, actually. You can see the sandblasted concrete or pebble dashed, whatever it is. And then they've put bricks on the outer work. Whoa! It's kind of a, a voyage of discovery because I've not been here before, so I didn't really know what I was letting myself in for or you for that matter so let's head out of St Margaret's Bay I'm going to go over to Capel La Fern that's where the, uh, the Battle of Britain Memorial Museum is um, I'm not going to take that in today although I might have a quick five minute gander around because just around that corner there's a command post and then dotted all along the north downs it's a series of pillboxes and these are in open fields so we can actually go in and have a meander around to see what's what. Just before we head over to um, Crete, Roast, Crete Road East and West, we've got this. You can just see the flat top of what was once and here's um, where they would have had the machine gun post was once a, an outlook post which I think is a type 25 or a type 27 now it's a very precarious angle because I can't go down there Tesco carrier bag I think people use this but onto the roof big flat roof I'll give you this overlay picture that I found on the internet it's a question of how do I get down there in order to take a picture, to, to have a look at this post. Let me see from underneath here. I think I might get down there, you know. The only way down, I think this is the lowest point just here through the trees. This is a command post. Oh yeah, check it out. I will get you a, a better angle of it. But you've got Flat roof protecting from aviation. What have we got here? 10 inches thick concrete, followed by steel RSJs and a couple of rooms. You've got some concrete bollards there which would have held the machine guns. Uh, I'm not a big fan of graffiti, it doesn't do it for me. I wish people would leave things alone. But let's go just a tad down here so I can get a good angle of this. Ouch. Yeah, look at this command post. So they would have used this as an observation post, but also in its own right, um, a machine gun post to shoot down enemy aircraft. Can I get back up? Now, just across the way here, you can see a Type 22 hexagonal Oh, it's getting up, the wind. So what my plan is to get up onto Crete Road East. Crete Road East. Right, let's get back to the car. Warm up the coccyx. <laughs> it's what looks like a Type 24. It's actually a square one. Or is it? No, actually, Type 22. That's amazing. So, hexagonal shape. Look at this, it's, it's protecting. There's actually one just in the underbrush, underbrush, under, under, undergrowth, the bushes over there. There's another two protecting the main road. But there's this one. 
let's have a walk around it because this is probably the best one I've seen so far they've blocked up one of the embrasures in fact two of them are blocked up now wow three of them there's only one hole left so yeah you can see how they were built they would have had wooden planking you know stacked up to form the support and then they would have just filled it with concrete oh there's an embrasure here reinforced by steel girders and I think inside I didn't bring my torch but I've got my phone so I can highlight the torch from my phone let's do that let's go in So this has only got one wall. So you've got an embrasure. There would have been one here, there would have been one here, and one here, and two. And they have this supporting wall, but actually acts as protection. So having this wall for protection, the soldier is gonna be here aiming, shooting, but they're gonna receive oncoming fire. And if he should get hit, and the enemy are that side shooting then the bullets are hitting this wall and they're protecting the soldier on the other side some of these type twos actually have y internal structures so you know obviously this one is protecting the soldier there and there but also from the other side what do we see here sometimes you you know the soldiers that would have been here would have left inscriptions it's just too difficult to actually see you know apart from r plus p it's <laughs> a little modern don't you think type 22 mm. now there is another one just down the hill now it had two purposes it could stop the bullets hitting because of the shape and it could protect them if they were being you know attacked so there you go. Okay, we're nearly done. Second to last one. There's one I want to visit at the far end where we'll conclude. But for now, this one, again, sat in a farmer's field. But look at the aspect that it's going to protect. Now, just across the hill there is Hawkins Aerodrome, or was once Hawkins Aerodrome. <laughs> it's now housing estate. You know, some things are never preserved. But it had a strategic import importance during the Battle of Britain because it's so close to the coast that the pilots could attack in formation and zip back, refuel, reload within, I want to say minutes, but clearly however long it took to reload. But also the airport was strate strategically located because you had the formations flying from Farnborough and Biggin Hill, Manston, and they were all fighting over here across the, um, the Hellfire Corner. And if they had damage or they needed to refuel, they'd use Hawkinge again. So Hawkinge was a strategic place and it needed protecting. And so here is another pillbox. So should there have been an invasion, it looks like it's another Type 22. You've got the embrasures with this sort of con concrete tiered um, window ledges and sills. This one is particularly interesting because, as we go inside, it looks dark. You've got shelves for the guns. This is probably the best preserved one I think I've seen. You know, you've got this metal, oh no, that's a tea light, someone had a tea light. But you'd have had the brackets here for the, the Bren guns. There's, there's a post there, you can see it. And they've got a perfect angle across the fields. And I was talking about a Y post structure in the other one. So here you've got the two ends of the Y. And as we go around here, it's just one. So, you, well, actually, it's more than Y, isn't it? So one, two, three, four, five. You could have had five squaddies in here. Now, it wasn't a habitable place. It was purely functional as a, a defence 
I've got the light shining on my eyes so that I can talk to you, but I'm actually um, blinding myself. Let's head back outside. I don't think I can go that way. It would be nice if I could. I just want to have a look outside here. I'm respectful of the farmer's crops, so I'm not going to stand on them. But again, remembering that sometimes these pillboxes were buried as deep as the window ledge. This one's actually standing quite proud in the field. And it does look quite formidable, doesn't it? And we have to remember that these were hastily constructed in a period of six months all across the country. So I think I'll go back out through this way. So the whole ethos of the construction being concrete, quick, fabricated building makes me wonder if it had any influence in the 60s and the 70s when they were throwing up skyscrapers and housing blocks and shopping malls, you know, and they were all made of concrete because they'd had the experience of just quickly fabricating these. Right, one more to visit. Let's go and do it. So you come down these little country lanes and you know you're kind of in the middle of nowhere and the last thing you actually expect to see i was here the other day when i went foot foot deep into the mud oh. <laughs> i hope you're enjoying this the last thing you expect to see is a pillbox just kind of propping itself up so we're getting in a farmer's field now I was just down there, I've driven from the far end where we were looking at that other one, just on the brow of the hill. So had that pillbox failed and the invasion, invading troops had come across the field, they'd have this one to contend with. This is like an original Type 22. It really is. It's kind of squat, in the, in, deep in the um, undergrowth. It's got its embrasure windows. It's in very good condition, considering this was built in 1940. So what, 80 years old? Concrete lasts, doesn't it? It's even got some sandbags in it. Shall we go in? Let's go and have a look, see what's inside. <laughs> a chair, a wooden shelf. It's actually got sandbags, this amazes me. Do you think these are World War II sandbags? They're solid. The chair gets me and the beer. Wow. This is in good, good condition. So no enemy's gonna get us across these fields. How about that? This one is in good condition. Even a tiny little window. You're covering all areas because your gun is going to go from here to there. And they took no chances because if the enemy are coming out across the meadow and the field, across here, then, you know, you, you'd want these gun emplacement holes facing this direction, but they've actually got them on the other side. So I'm not going up. That's what it looks like on top. So what are these, a foot, a foot, foot and a half, a foot? They'll withstand bullet fire, artillery shells, aircraft sh shooting down on them. Had there been any tanks, then, you know, a tank would have blown the thing up. How fascinating. You know, you almost want to do a trip of pillboxes around the country. One last look here. Because as I was walking by, you get this kind of the, the daylight coming through each of the little windows. How brave were our boys? Because they were fighting for their lives. There was an ever-present threat of invasion. And, you know, it, the, the, the home guard, all the military that were based on land here were taught not to they would they would take no prisoners you know you you shoot to kill 
So that's my little trip around the Kent coast, South Kent coast. There's, they're dotted all over the countryside. Hope you found that interesting or fascinating. I'm amazed, I really am. I'm going to end the video there. Thanks for watching, bearing with. I will see you in another video of some sort or description. I think I might end the video and then think about crossing this puddle. Because look, I've got this mud to drape so far. Oh, it's been raining. Bye for now.